Nearly 82 years ago, he came from Daniel Island on a boat. Many bridges have been built since then, politically, socially, and physically, all throughout the lifetime of Philip Simmons, the artist and man carved into history forever. He's just so very humble, and he's a good, good man. His word ethics is, if you want your prayers answered, get off your knees and hustle. And that helps me along the way. Because sometimes I find myself on my knees and, and I'm thinking, you know? And whenever I get up and hustle, it all comes together. So it makes sense to me. I start doing iron work when I was 13. When you say iron work, that making iron for the carriages, making the iron for the horse wagon. And after the cars came in and put the horses out of business, and I had to change. That was the best thing that ever happened to me. I never called myself an artist, but most of the customers come. I heard that you was an artist. Then I start thinking that way. Look all over Charleston and you'll see Philip Simmons. It is uh, blacksmithing as a craft uh, that Philip Simmons, um, more so than anyone, just did a tremendous amount of, uh, I think it's both craft uh, and technique, but also artistry. And so when you see those uh, beautiful wrought iron gates, uh, we have a window grill here in Avery. Uh, it speaks both of history, but also of exquisite craft and technique and, and artistry. He started looking to nature for his designs, and so he started doing leaves and doing animals. And so you see his, his animals, they all seem to be alive. He's like the egrets are walking, they appear to be walking. The snake is dreaming, the birds are flying. And one of the gates here is the snake gate. That was a commission from the Historic Charleston Foundation. They wanted um, him to do a gate. One of the, the board members of, of the foundation carved a snake in mahogany and took it to Mr. Simmons and said, we want to put the snake into the gate. He said to make the snake alive, he had to put eyes in it. So he bore a hole through the head of the snake. And Mr. Stoney jumped back and said, oops, so you will bite me. <laughs> the day I shot a wrought iron gate, and I thought of Philip Simmons. I mean, I felt the wrought iron, its beautiful shape, and I really did think of Philip Simmons. His, he's, he is throughout our city because a craft that that Charleston had, perhaps better than any other place. And Philip Simmons is the, uh, the living continuation of that craft. He's added immensely to the beauty of Charleston and, uh, and his work is everywhere. You see it and you feel it and uh, it's very, uh, very beautiful. It's important for us to teach as our children move about our city and see these beautiful wrought iron fences. It's important for them to know um, from whence they've come and who is still uh, moving about us today. And it's amazing to see him at 91 um, still be just as energetic as he was five years ago. But I think our children need to understand that legacy and particularly because he is still with us for them to be able to understand and be a part of his own experiences today as he talks about his experiences of his past.